Archiving started. Welcome back to PID Controllers Theory and Practice. This is part four here at Lawrence Technological University Robotics Labs in Southfield, Michigan. Um, in the previous previous slides, we talked about uh, we talked about some definitions. We built a model of a DC motor that we could use for our simulations. We talked about PI and P and I controllers in a, on an unconstrained theoretical model. Now we're going to kind of throw in a couple of real world real world constraints, and we'll talk about some tuning tuning rules as well. So practical considerations. Um, this is the slide from the previous previous presentation where we had the PI control that worked so well. Uh, you can see compared to just the plain motor, it came up to speed very quickly. It controlled very accurately. But one of the things we see here when I look at this green line, which is the voltage, I started out asking for 50 volts. And in case you haven't mentioned, noticed, I'm plotting voltage times 10 on these graphs, so it scales nicely. So where it says 500, it was really corresponding to 50 volts into my model. Um, and then for my normal control, I'm, I'm on the order of 8 to 10 volts. Okay. Well, if I can run my motor on 8 to 10 volts and get the job done, chances are I'm not going to have a 50 volt power supply running this thing. That's just a practical thing. Chances are I may only have 15 or 20 volts available. So what happens, you know, when I don't have this voltage available that the PI controller is asking for? Well, let's run a simulation. That's the beauty of simulations. We can throw that in here. We can add this saturation block to clip the output of my controller to plus or minus 15 volts. And this goes into the DC motor here, and this is my PI control. Same gains and everything as last time. All I've done is add this limit to say, to simulate I've got a 15 volt power supply. Here's my previous results here on the right. And here's what happens when I limit that voltage. Okay. Now, as you would expect, it's a little bit slower coming up, right? You don't have that 50 volts available. It can't just zoom, you know. Okay, that's no big deal. But, you know, dude, what's this? I mean, where did this come from? I, I've got less voltage, but in spite of the fact that I've got less voltage, I went zooming through my set point, and I've got this overshoot here that took like five seconds to go away. Where did that come from? You know, that's crazy talk, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm limiting my voltage and I'm getting, you know, I've, I've got this overshoot. I'm losing control. Well, let's break down what the details of what this controller is doing. Here's my controller. I just snipped that little bit. And I have the speed, the red line. That's the speed coming back here in my feedback, okay? I have the error that I... That's the difference between my 500 RPM set point and the measured speed that's giving me my error. Okay, that's this line right here, and it starts off off scale. It's huge, and then this is it crosses zero, and this is this is the time where I'm getting that overshoot where I'm going too fast, so my error is negative. Well, we can look at what the different output, the proportional output and the integral output. Starting with proportional output, it starts out very large, okay? It starts out around 50. Well, if I, my proportional term here is equal to 50, um, that's where my 50 volts comes from, right there, right? The integral term starts out at zero, that's the black line, because it hasn't had a chance to integrate or accumulate, but while it takes time for this motor to speed up, it keeps accumulating and integrating and integrating and integrating and winding up, as we call it, okay? And my controller output is, is this blue line here, dark blue, darker blue. Oops, excuse me, wrong one. Scratch that. It's the cyan line right here, okay? But obviously I'm asking for about 50 and I only have 15 available. That's that purple dotted line. This is what's actually available, and then once we get here, it's able to deliver what we're asking for. But during this period of time where the, what the controller thinks it's doing and what's really happening to the motor, um, 
I've got a discrepancy. And what's happening is this integral term is winding up, winding up. It's asking for more and more and more integral, and it's just not getting it. So, but it doesn't know it's not getting it, so it just keeps winding. And then once things get to the point where I'm close you know, to my speed and, and my voltage can drop, um, I have this integrator sitting up here at about, it's right around 15, so it's going to keep that motor going. It's giving it that full 15 volts, even though I'm already too fast in my, you know, I've, I've gone over my 500 RPM limit here. And here I divided the speed by 10. Um, so even though I'm going too fast, it takes time for that integrator to unintegrate or unwind. And it will eventually, and you'll come down to the speed you want. But that's that's what gives us this, this overshoot behavior, because we let that integrator build itself up in spite of the fact it wasn't really working. So what we need to do is prevent that. And what we'll do here is we'll look at the output of our controller, and we know that we can't get more than 15 volts. So we compare the output of the controller with 15 right there, if the output of the controller is above 15, we'll send zero to the integrator. We'll accumulate zero. So it'll just sit there and hold and never move. And if the output is below 15, so the integrator can do something, we'll actually send that, you know, um, error times ki into the integrator, okay, to get to get the integral part. So we essentially switch off that integrator to prevent prevent this wind up when the voltage is too high. And here's the difference in performance. With, without that anti-wind up, we got this overshoot and stuff. With the anti-wind up, we didn't get that overshoot. Uh, it probably hit the target a little bit faster, not much faster, but we avoid that overshoot. And in other applications, you could even get instability and oscillations because the controller winds up one way even though it can't really do anything, and it's, and it's wound up so far when you try to, when you're on the other side of the set point, it has to unwind, but by the time it unwinds, it's gone too far. And you can, you can drive instability or oscillations uh, due to this wind up. Not a good thing. So anytime you have an integrator, you really need to include some anti-wind up. Now, I promised to talk a little bit about tuning. I don't have slides for that because this model here um, is very heavily damped, so basically I can crank up the proportional gain as far as I want, and it'll just sit there and you know switch between 15 volts plus and 15 volts minus, and um, it behaves fairly well. But what we typically will do um, with a more realistic plant, as opposed to a one that gives me nice graphs plant. <laughs> Um, is you, you set the I equal, integral gain equals zero, Ki, okay? And you take Kp, and you ask yourself, um, what is the magnitude of the error that, that um, the biggest error I want to see, that so the magnitude of the error that corresponds to, you know, full on, or, or full negative on if you're going in two directions or off, you know. What, what, what value here, if I take my maximum error and I multiply it by Kp equals the, um, essentially the maximum voltage. So if I, I have 15 volts available, 15 volts, um, and I'm willing to tolerate an error of, of 100 RPM, um, so I want 100 times Kp to equal to 15. So 15 over 100 equals my Kp. So I will set my Kp equal to 0.15 as, as just a rough starting point. It's going to be wrong, but i got to start somewhere. You know, do I start at 0.15? Do I start at 1? Do I start at a million? Who knows, right? Well, this is a, this is a good way to figure out just a starting point, and I'll I'll try it, and I'll simulate it. 
or I won't simulate it. I'll, I'll, you know, if I have a model, I'll simulate it. If I don't, I'll try it in the hardware. And if, if the system is real sluggish and you know just comes up this slowly, I say, okay, I can go bigger than 0.15. I'll, I'll probably change it by a factor of 10. I'll go from 0.15 to 1.5. And maybe on 1.5, you know, it comes up fast here, and it's pretty good. And I'll say, okay, 0.15 was good. Let's try 50, or 1.5 was good. Let's try 15. Well, when I go to 15, I find that now all of a sudden I'm, I'm oscillating here, okay? So 15 was way too much. Um, so I know I need to be somewhere between 1.5 and 15. I'll try 7. And 7 gets me, you know, something like this, okay? So I got a little bit of oscillation, not too much. And then I say, okay, I'm going to cut that in half, and that's the rule. You find the, the proportional gain that just starts a little bit of oscillation with the integral set to zero, and then you cut it in half. And once you cut that in half, you should have a good stable um, response. Now you can start playing with the integral gain. If, if I started out at 7 uh, for my KP, I'll probably, you know, again, now where do I pick a starting point? Is it going to be a million? Well, not likely because I'm using seven. So I'd maybe start at 0 0.07 for my KI. And I'd start, again, making it bigger and bigger by factors of two or five or ten until I get that too much oscillation again. And then I'll take whatever number that was and I'll cut it in half and that'll be my final result. So the rule is increase your proportional gain until it starts to oscillate, cut it in half. Start your increasing your integral gain from zero to you see the oscillations again, cut it in half. And that will give you a, a reasonable working um, working values on a on a well behaved linear plant. Um, that's probably the simplest tuning rule. There's lots of other tuning rules where um, you know you look at more mathematical properties of the plant. But that method has, has served me fairly well, and it's, and it's fairly good for kind of a seat of the pants, feel it out. Now, like I said, with this particular model, it doesn't work real good because I can, you know, I can make the integral, the proportion gain huge, 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 and it comes up fast, and then it does a little oscillation. Um, but, you know, I'd be asking for 7 or 8 or 900 volts, which I can't supply. And the... So you kind of have to look at, at, you know, are you saturating your controller a lot? If your controller is saturated all the time, um, back off on that proportional gain just, just to be reasonable and make it do reasonable things. Okay, so that, that should wind up uh, part four. And then we'll talk about in the next video why motor position is so much more di different from motor velocity and why you want to use a PD instead of a PI. And Thanks for hanging in there, and see you on the flip side.